Big luscious curves and you wonder why chat and mods tease you. Listen, I don't wonder anymore. I just wonder why people like me being raging so much. Okay, so now that we have this, um, let's go about the uh, the window wing. The window wing. So I'm going to... Let me give you the color wheel, by the way, so you guys can see where I am. Let's go for maybe a uh, more greenish color and a little bit more brighter. Um, and then we're making a new, by the way, we're making a new layer. Okay, so I have this on one layer, the line art here. This is one layer. I made a new layer. And I put the new layer underneath the line art layer, okay? So that when I paint, I can just paint underneath and it's not going to destroy anything. So if you haven't done that, this is your chance. Please do it. And um, I'm taking a color that is a little bit more intense and a bit brighter and... New layer underneath the line art layer. Exactly. And I'm going to roughly fill all of this in. I'm going to use a solid brush. Just so that I have a solid shape here. So even for this, I'm going to just block this in for now. Okay. This is behind, this is in front. Okay, and then it goes here. Bloop, 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 Okay. And then another thing that is like quite, um, it's going to add quite a bit of interest. Let me, I'm going to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to do it wrong on purpose and then do it correct right after so you guys see like the difference and you guys understand why one is better than the other. So, um, let me fill this all in. Okay, so we're having this shape now. Um, which like in on itself is no problem, you know, looks fine. You're zooming out, silhouette is fine. You're like, Rokasa, what the fuck is wrong with it? Why, why would there anything, why, why is there a problem? But we're wanting to make things interesting, which means that we want to have a little bit of negative space in between, okay? So these parts here, this big chunk, it's going to be a negative space, meaning we're going to get all of the hair removed here and give this whole space some more, some more um, room to breathe, make the overall silhouette look a little bit more interesting. Same here, okay, we're going to cut this out. And now when you're zooming out, you're like, maybe, okay, maybe it's a bit small. If you're thinking it's looking a little bit unbalanced, you can add a bit more thickness. We're like, overall, we do love us some negative space. Okay. Thank you and welcome. Welcome, welcome. Yes. So this separates the ribbon strands, right? Exactly. Now the space is breathing. Yes, yes, exactly. So we're going to do the same here. We're going to block in all of our all of our hair shape. So the earring would be in front. I'm also wouldn't necessarily sort the hair and uh, skin layers like this. This is for the demonstration purpose, okay? It's not the ideal way for it. Mostly I just put skin and hair on one layer. But that's just me. So I'm going to put the negative space in right away. 
maybe here some even though i'm going to put all of this in one okay let me see if there's a hole yeah i think there's a hole yep 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 i know it okay so we're going to try and find the gap oh it's up here i think is it better now yes okay so now we're filling this part in too okay and now we're having a um an interesting outline for the hair okay even if we're zooming out so if you're zooming out you can look at your hair and if it looks strange reconsider your life choices if it looks fine good job i'm proud of you Listen, even if it doesn't look fine, okay, you're trying your best, you'll get there, keep practicing, you're going to do great. It's all about, it's all about practice, okay, just keep doing it, just keep doing it, it's gonna be great eventually. Okay, so now um, we are having the, uh, the basic shape and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to alpha lock my layer that has the base color in it and alpha lock means that whenever i paint i am just painting within the pixels that i've already laid down okay and there should be it should be in every program so if you don't if you don't if you've never used alpha lock before try and find your alpha lock in your program and um, lock that shit also let me see if i can actually move my thing a little bit more so you guys can see it better wait uh, i think i have to push this in a bit more yeah okay so now you can see things a bit better a bit better okay I always wonder how to do that. So in Clip Studio, it's very simple. If you have Clip Studio, you just have to click on this little checkered button. Normally, whatever program you're using, it should be something having something to do with a checkered button. So even if you're losing Procreate or whatever or Photoshop, it should have a checkered pattern somewhere and that way it should be alpha lock. I use Procreate, then you have to swipe to the left. I No, you have to press the layer and then there's a menu and then you can press alpha lock. Or you have to swipe to the left. I'm not sure anymore. It's been a while since I used Procreate. But it also has the option. I think, it, I think you can swipe to the left. I'm not sure. What is the difference from clipping mask and alpha lock again? Um, it's pretty simple. If you have an alpha lock... Now, if I if I paint, it's all, it's only the um, only the layer. No, only on the visible pixels is where I can paint. Right, that is alpha lock. If I have a clipping mask, so another layer that I clip onto the other one, it looks like it's exactly the same. But if I am unclipping it, you can see that I have all the shit back. So I still have the full the full amount of pixels that I laid down um which makes this method uh non-destructive so to say so in case um i wanted the i wanted the hair or the shadow to move up i could just take my clipping mask and i could move it up if i would have done the same on the layer underneath so if we would have done the same with the clipping mask and i would have made it dark here and i wanted the shadow to move up I would move all of the painting so if you're afraid use a clipping mask if you do not if you trust jesus use an alpha lock no <laughs> clipping masks are usually a good option if you're not super sure about what you're doing i also use a lot of clipping masks so something i'm going to do now to make it um nice and simple first of all is that we are going to separate the um we're going to separate the front part from the back part of the hair and what i mean by this 
is that I'm going to basically indicate which part of the hair or which part of the overall shape is um, underneath so it won't get any light and which part of the hair is on top so it will catch light. So in this example all the hair in here is not going to really catch any light because it's it's getting it's getting hidden by the other hair so to say and this one in between can also be dark because one strand is blocking it on top so it would look somewhat like this and we're having the same thing happening over here and the strand in front is going to stay bright because it's in the front and all the back here is going to be darkened I hope that it makes sense so now this part is also darkened in here so as you can see um, now we're having a separation of all the hair that is inside which is not going to catch any light and all the hair that is more outside which is going to catch light so now we're going to use the a clipping mask so we're going to make a new layer that is on top of our base layer here and we are going to clip it to the layer underneath so clipping masks in clip studio only use this little button up here which has like these little squares in front of one another and then it should have this little red icon indicating that it's clipping in procreate i think you can press the layer and then you can press clipping mask and then it should have like a little arrow pointing down in photoshop it also has a little arrow pointing down and that indicates that it's clipped and you can always test it by painting in it and it should only show on the layer um, that you indicate on the pixels that you indicated from the layer underneath we're having a clipping mask and now we're going to use one of my personal absolute favorite layer modes which is overlay so we're going to the section here blending modes and we're going to choose overlay okay overlay what it basically does it's a little bit it's a little bit tricky to explain i'm also going to use a soft brush from my from my brush shit here i'm going to use the soft one and basically overlay is going to if we're looking at the color wheel okay i'm trying to explain this layer mode it's very strange so <laughs> It's intensifying things, okay? It's intensifying things. Everything, you have like this 50% threshold, right? This is like a 50% perfect gray. Everything above is brighter and everything above is going to darken the painting. So if we're going to put a 50% gray on the painting, this is like not perfectly gray, but if it's a perfect gray, a perfect 50% gray with overlay nothing happens okay nothing happens and if we're going slightly above if we're going lighter it should lighten up the color underneath without making it muddy okay and without taking away the color if we're doing the same with um any color sheesh with any color that is um underneath the 50% one so a darker one it should darken the color that we're applying it on that is basically the overlay with overlay you can brighten things up but you can also darken things up and you can also make things a lot more saturated so if we're picking a color like let's say the light blue so if you're going into a light saturated blue and we're going on top it's going to make it a lot more saturated right so before it was basically just brightening it up and the more we're going into a saturated color the more it's also going to add this saturated color on top and we can also go for example to a green one if we have if we want to have some variety we can go over to green and it's going to add a nice green shine to it and it's basically going to mix 
the green you apply with the blue underneath so the colors like automatically work with better with an un with one another than just going with the green in it overlay is basically a good way to make colors work and you can do the same with the shadows if i wanted to add more green darker green you can go in and you can add a darker green to the hair and it's going to mix the green with the blue and you can do this with a bunch of colors so we could even go all the way on the opposite side with a red and it would mix it with the blue in the most in the best way so to say i can go like very desaturated and bright and just add a little bit more and more of the saturation and it will mix it with the blue or we could take a yellow and you can also go to your um hue saturation tab and you can basically scroll all around and you can see if there's like a color combination that you really like so that way you can easier see it put the saturation up put the saturation down make it brighter make it darker change the overall hue it's great overlay layers are the shit okay so in this case um, I'm going to choose like a slight desaturated green and I'm using a soft brush and I will apply it like all the way on the top where the light would hit the most and as it goes down I'm not going to apply that color anymore instead I'm going to go into a darker one and apply like the darker green on the bottom okay and so when you zoom out you can see that there's already um there's already a slight nice variation in the um in the hair okay so it's a good it's a good nice way to quickly give it some overall volume all right and then once we have the overlay and we like how it looks i'm going to merge it with the layer below and um then we're also going to we're also going to maybe already merge the layer of the line art okay so we're having the line art here we're having our basic colors here if i turn this off you can see that it still works as an overall silhouette so if we're zooming out you can see it's still very much readable the shadows the lights everything despite it being very simple it's still readable so you know you did a good job if you're turning off the line art and things are still readable from a zoomed out perspective okay so we can put the line art back and um, something i would also do is to maybe reduce the opacity a little bit so i'm just going to put the opacity on 68 percent or something i don't know it doesn't have to be exactly 68 whatever looks good okay and once we have it there you can always make a new folder okay and you can take the layers you've used so far and put them in the folder and duplicate the folder in case you are regretting things we are having this one we're having the line art we're putting it in a folder we're duplicating it in case we want to we somehow regret merging things but after we have our safety we're going to merge the selected layers so now all of our hair is on one layer okay and um that is basically when the rendering of the hair starts so something i would do is to take the hair and basically clean it up oh it's still locked be sure to un un alpha lock that shit and um so in this case i'm going to like quickly put in a a nice little arrow here that shows us where the light is coming from okay Woo! so that we always remember this while rendering and now I'm just going to start color picking the colors that we've established on the canvas. And these parts here are going to be the ones facing up towards the light. Okay. 
so these are going to be nice and bright but um these two planes okay so this plane here fuck what is what is this arrow what am i doing <laughs> what the fuck how can i not <laughs> I can't believe this. It was a fucking square. <laughs> oh my god, man. <laughs> it's a hammer. <laughs> okay. Anyways. Uh, this, 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 this triangle, okay? This is the uh, this is the plane that is catching the light. This shit here is catching the light and this shit here is catching the light. But these ones in here, they are not catching the light, okay? Light is coming from here, wah, 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 wah. That's all nice and dandy. But the other ones are curling away. So we already have some darker values established here. And I'm going to like overall just darken the, the parts in here where the light doesn't really hit, okay? So we're trying to establish a 3d structure so to say and we also have an even darker one in between so we can go into the into the little canyon the hair canyon <laughs> and we can like really darken this part up also we can have a little bit of a of the skin coming along in here because that's kind of like how it works okay and maybe also dragging it out a little bit further on the skull here, on the forehead. Okay. And um, then again, we're having the, the kind of ribbon part. And this is also a big step where the stylization comes in. Um, so you're, you're taking the little edge here and really separating light from dark so we're making this one like very dark and we're having this little highlight on the other side and really pushing the contrast same here okay we're taking this bright color and we're pushing it all the way around the curve while having the dark contrast color inside very much like the ribbon again we're having like two sides the top side and the bottom side and we're having them go against one another so to say and in here um we're trying to do a little bit more of a variety too so because it's currently like very very flat and that's not really how hair comes out of the skull we're trying to make these little um triangle shapes that all emerge from this point and kind of get more and more flat the more they move out okay so somewhat like this we can also erase in there have some a little bit more and some a little bit less erased something like this okay and they are also going more straight up here and then they are getting flatter and flatter the more we move out so something like that can be a bit softened up here maybe a bit less saturation for some of them okay okay and also we want to have a little bit of variety in here because it's currently just one color and we don't like that so we're going a little bit darker and a little bit saturated in here and this is like the part where we're starting to get the different strands in there so i'm just going to again basically outline this part and um this is still getting a little bit of bounce light in here from the forehead but over there it's getting less and less light which means that this part is going to be darker than this one you can also again alpha lock your layer for this so you don't paint all over 
and then darken this and have some of the darker color kind of merge out as strands here and then clean this up again okay and you can see it looks a lot nicer than just having one singular color and we're going to do the same for this for, for this side here okay and we're doing the same here we're having some parts that are kind of cut in we can also again flip it and this is going a bit more up so it's basically following this shape that we established here and then it has the little strands like that and then the upper ribbon here part is overlapping the underlying one okay okay and now that we have this established let's move on to some parts down here so because of the line art um we already have some natural differences in the hair in here and we can use them to kind of guide us for um some more smaller strands so i'm going to use this one and i'm going to guide it up a little bit further and then cut away some of it and again think about the some strands lying on top of other ones so this strand here is going to lie on top of this strand and i'm going to treat it again like it's a piece of fabric so it's going to lay on top i'm going to use a bright color which is going to fade out because again this is the part where it curves away so this these are the lights still hitting and then here the light the light rays can't hit the hair anymore as it's curling away from the light source so this shit is darker and this is bright okay okay and then we also have that part here cleaned up and this part can also be cleaned up and now some of the fun part is like okay why is why is one part dark and why is another part not dark and like how do you get the strands and wah 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 so something that is happening here is that one strand is overlapping the other one right so we're going to choose one of the, the dark values that we established in the shadows and we're going to pump it in here okay i'm going to lock the layer for this again and um i'm putting in a strong shadow here because this is somewhat like the uh, the fabrics overlapping that means that all the light is going to get blocked out from this part of the hair and we can also do these things here and there you know we can have some little interruptions in our strands where we have a little bit of a darker thing that just indicates that one strand is overlapping the other one and have them in there would always follow like the overall overlying structure okay so somewhat like this And for example here, um, here we can also have a bit of a darker one as it's, sh as it's curving away. And this part of the hair here again you can see it's, it's facing the top. That means I can't, I, can't, I can't paint arrows. That means we're going to take a lighter value from up here that we established. And we're going to slap it on the part that is facing upwards. So like that. And again as it's going to curl back down and it's curling inward it's getting darker. 
but wherever it's facing upwards we're going to get it a nice bright value to indicate that it's getting hit by the light okay and we can do that over here too so this is facing slightly upwards so it's getting the lighter color this is also facing slightly upwards and with the upwards and downward facing strands um i would definitely suggest looking at references it's gonna help you see better like which which parts of the hair are facing the light and which parts are being bent away from the light you know but yeah so we're putting putting the light on all the parts that are going towards the light source and as they bend away we're going to again put them into shadow and then we get a nice variety here okay and um now here we have a strand emerging out so we can again give it like a a darker shadow where they merge into one another to one big strand and um in here this is like one big bright chunk of hair which looks a little bit boring so in order to make it more interesting we're going to take one of the darker values from our shadows and we're going to interrupt it by like sectioning off this strand and it's also good to go about it more in a diagonal way rather than sectioning off the hair so if i section it up like this it's fine right if i would have done it right in the middle so if i would have done a, st a strand that goes all the way right here in the middle it's still okay but it looks a little bit more unnatural and stiff so sectioning off the hairs in diagonal so again this is like a thin part and then it goes out and it gets thicker it just gives it a bit more of a dynamic look for the for the strand so that is something that i would suggest and then maybe it has like a, another strand coming off from there And this is the part where they kind of interact. So this is like the darkest one where they overlap. And then it goes out. So and this is like something where I said it's like really similar to how um, folds work. So if this was a piece of clothing, it would have interact very similar when it comes to light and dark. So as it's squished together two strands or as like fabric is squished together, these parts on that are squishing are bright and the remaining strands or the remaining fabric that is being squished together gets no light. So it is dark in the middle until it emerges and gets light again and is getting brighter. And another lovely thing is that um we can we can make the strand a little bit more interesting also by adding loose strands okay so this is a very fun thing to do let's say we have this um we have this big chunk of hair here okay because we always want to go from big to small from simple to complicated so we're having this big chunk of hair and it's looking all nice and pleasant and simplified if we're zooming out but it's kind of missing a little bit of shazam a little bit of shablam we can now take the color from our light color okay and we're going to take and i'll take the solid brush again the one that has like no change in intensity and um now i'm just going to add little loose strayers so basically what the strands strayers strayers strands of hair is a, 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 apparently a strayer so we're adding little loose strands of hair 
which means um, that we are imitating we are imitating the form that we already have while over exaggerating it okay so what we have here is like a very soft uh, C curve okay and now if I want to add strands what I'm going to do is that I'm going to imitate the C but like in this case I'm going in like quicker right or we could even go in even quicker and imitate what we have and then over exaggerate it somewhat and that way add some loose hairs in there or maybe here you could say okay it's going out and then going back in or maybe it's not going back in and it's just kind of staying there loosey-goosey and we can do this on the outside too okay so here again we're having like a very soft uh slightly bent c curve and now we're just over exaggerating it by maybe going out a little bit uh, more and then going back in or having a smaller one that is already being part of it further up so we're we're basically trying to stay within um the form that we established so here we could also add a little strand or we could add a little strand even on the top okay but we want to stay in the overall form so this is like the the part where the hair becomes like more dynamic and fun we can also add different sizes of strands so you could make like a really big chunk that goes out and then make another really thin one and you can see it's like oh my god wow we spend so much time so much work on like rendering this hair there's so much detail wow did you paint every strand individually what hell fucking nah we just we just added the illusion of detail by adding little strands that break off the big chunks that we use as a guiding system for our painting okay so does it does it make sense does it make sense also here for example we could also have one breaking this shit off imitating it over exaggerating the basic shape uh, maybe here we want to have like a little a little loose strand to make it look a little bit more cute so we would take what we have the curve and over exaggerate it in order to get like these these loose strands in between okay and um so back to the rendering part um it's all about continuing to clean up so we're also having these thick lines from the from the original line art and i would just try and get rid of a lot of the lines and have the colors speak for it rather um and then again if it's getting tucked behind the ear it means that there is a it, that it's very dark on that part because things are getting compressed so we're having a look somewhat like this where the strands are very dark in here and as they move further out they get lighter and brighter okay and we want to also mostly try and work with some c and s shapes so like the pleasant pleasant most pleasant shapes for here i find personally is to use like c and s curves and just give most strands a light a light bend you know so instead of having everything go like very stiff or like even more straight we're trying to give it all a little bit of a a swirl a little bit of a nice you know it's uh it's it's really just a question of um practice the more you do it the more you're just kind of getting into the habit of just applying them automatically and that way you're just getting better and quicker at here 
Here though, we're trying to get rid of the lines and having more of the lights and shadows speak for us. This part also would be kind of dark here as it's overlapping. And this should also have a bunch of a dark shadow. And then as the hair is pressing itself out again from behind the ear, it's starting to be more bright, okay? And then, yes, we also have um, maybe a little separation here. Maybe they are a little bit connected and afterwards they are being cut off from one another as one strand goes over and we can try and this is currently like a very thick ribbon and we could say okay we want to have a bit more variety so let's thin it out some more on the bottom squish it together to make the overall shape a little bit more interesting and then remember that this is the bottom side so it's not really getting a lot of light it's having the stronger shadow and then as it is also curling down it also has a slight shadow variation here and you can make this like even stronger if i take a liquify brush and i squish this together You can see you can also over exaggerate the form and it still works. Also, did I say hi, Monsieur Cook? Hello! So yeah, that is, a, that is a good way to add some variety to the shape. And then from the point where it's squished, we can often have like one strand emerging and joining back in on the bigger strand. And again, bring some variety in there. And then we have like different ribbons and layers. I'm just going to say ribbons for like the strands. Overlapping with each other, creating darker fold shadows. And wherever it emerges, it is again being more bright. And here also we would have some the bright strands leading up here mm -mm -mm. please work i have to save man I, ne I haven't even saved once what brush was it again liquify yeah liquify is a tool do you know about the liquify tool i don't know what guy what what program you guys are using what if you're using procreate if you're using photoshop if you're using uh clip studio there is a liquify tool and um liquify tool means that you can influence the you can influence the pixels that you have what about ms paint i think no i do not know but i think no so like the best use you can have i have um csp and then it's this sign here um the little bendy bendy shit which is next to the little droplet one next to the blur tool so you have the blur tool and you also have the liquify tool it says liquify and you can use it kind of like a brush and you can take layers uh, layers you can move your pixels so i can move them up if i overdo it you know you can move them all the way up here but you can also so let's say i want to give it a bit more volume i can move it up a little bit on the top Give the whole shape a little bit more of a shazam. Gotta go for now, y'all have fun. Have a good time, Brago. And you can also say, okay, I want to have this a lot bigger. So I can like inflate the pixels. And that way it all gets bigger and you can make it smaller. There's like a bunch of them, basically. I got you. Good, good, good. And I use the one where it's where it squishes the pixels together. She's got that floof here, yeah, man. Okay, and um, 
Now let me go about this one here. So I also like to cut in like proper good shapes. So here I would say this one overlaps the other. So we're having a little bit of a shadow that we're dragging down. Same as here. We're having a little bit of a highlight and a bit of a shadow from where the strands are overlapping and then as they move out here we can try and feather the hair a bit more so we can either leave it a bit more uh, connected together or feather the ends out to have a more floofy hair look and again we can add little individual strands to just give it an overall more intertwisting intertwisting look give this whole thing a bit more variety also here i have that shit merged together there again and also here a little bit bloop 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 Okay. And this has to be dark. Okay. I hope I am making sense. Um, I'm also going to push this up. Oops, wrong one. Push this up so it lies on the shoulder because it's currently a little bit all over the place. Okay. It's not perfect after all, it's just a demonstration. So we're having that. And now what we can do again is to add a new layer on top. Make it a clipping layer again. And um, we can choose the, the brightest color that we have. So we're having a nice blue. And... Um, let's just go a little bit more into the green and go a little bit brighter and we can add this as a highlight color so basically for the highlights on the here um, we would just place them on all the parts that are getting directly hit by the lights so that they kind of reflect it beep, 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 beep. so here and here for show um, okay, so we would have one here and then another highlight should kind of follow this curve So it's always good to kind of follow a curve with your highlight So let's just say we're making That kind of go over here And a little bit there Okay, okay and then we're making some little highlights here where it's facing upwards and some little highlights there where it's facing upwards and that would be like the overall the overall uh, placement of them and now that we have them I'm going to somewhat erase into it and we're going to try and create these these little shapes that are I don't even know how to explain these shapes it's like these thicker ones and then it's getting compressed in between and again it's like not super realistic it's more stylized and you can also use a blend brush if it looks a little bit too much like crosses and whatnot i would probably use a blend brush to make it blend out a little bit nicer because i'm not like the super duper fan of the giant anime highlights um but instead use a thinner make the brush pretty thin and then follow like the 
the overall shape of your strand with the highlight color and kind of create the illusion of individual strands that way by having these run down a little bit more here Like one overall um, important rule, let's say, is that we are always creating the most amount of detail by showing what is happening between light and dark. So hi Erika, how you doing? So with like highlights and shit, we can do like a lot of a lot of information that we can transport and help the picture look more finished so if we're putting a bunch of little strands only where the highlights are the hair is going to look a lot more rendered through also here i would have a little bit less because actually bending away from the light so it shouldn't be so many and then here a bit more. Okay. And then you can erase some away. I have it fade out a bit more. But now if we're turning it on and off, like the hair just looks a lot more three-dimensional and a lot more detailed. Um, and yes, so we have that. We can merge the highlight. We can also see if we want to have like, I don't know, overlay mode or whatever. Again, overlay the cheating one. We can see if we want to have a different hue for it. Maybe we want to have a pinker, pinkish highlight or a bluish one. That really depends on the light source and what you want to go for. If you want to have like i don't know a mermaid look i guess you can have like a very strong intense one and if you're just wanting to have a bit of a softer more natural blue highlight then um, you could take this kind of color instead okay so that would be kind of the, th the thing here or something we can of course do is to add a multiply layer to our skin and get a a shadow where the hair is but that is like not necessarily you know and that way it just looks a little bit more put together because you know hair creates shadows too so So it would be kind of like that. Okay. Oh yeah, something we can also do is because the shadows look a little bit sad and empty. Is that we can take the color from the shadows and maybe pick an even darker one. Thank you very much for the follow, Angie Saku. And welcome to the Imps. I hope you're having a lovely day today. And we can add a little little strands in the shadows to also give that shit some more variety you know that are amazing and that way it just looks a little bit more interesting in the shadow okay i would say that is like one 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 here done